Thing all day long between Hen and P God, Elise and Slick, all these, of course, friends and foes alike going head to head for Looter and Booga, though. They're still alive. Okay. So uh, I'm happy to see the boys still up here. I mean, Looter's had, I'd say, the most successful day so far, like with Avery. Like, they were really crushing it. They managed to, to pop off. They made multiple end games. Not enough to really be up in that top 10, but definitely close. Very, very close. Here comes the wall break looking for the snipe to sneak it in. Doesn't find it. That's onto TNA Slick, too. So look at this. All the TNA boys have got themselves lined up. Yeah, TNA on TNA. There's a bit of a bit of chemistry there from Bigger and Looter. Of course, they, this is, I presume, the first time they've played in a, in, in, in this sort of state. Definitely. So this is definitely <laughs> the first time they've played. Uh, so maybe the experience of the NA players like Booger and, and Avery would have helped Looter to understand how the, pl uh, the players play. And especially having a, a player like Booger, we saw really lead his teammate to some great plays in the endgame. Can he lead Looter here to a really good position for this endgame and maybe that victory royale at the end? And look at this, Nico's got a little bit of that high ground there. Quaw is based up just below, trying to break out the line of trees here to really open up the, the sight lines, but that's a risk too. What they do is end up revealing themselves to three, four teams based up on that little edge there. So gotta be careful, all this for the airdrop. Now they're completely exposed. They get to jump on it, but it's okay. Everyone's so focused up above and we're just gonna merge right into clicks. He gets dropped there in the process. To Hen and P God, major clash right there. And Hen, man, this man is just wrapping up body counts here on NA. Yeah, this is great to see. I mean, Hen and P God, they haven't been shy to take some some early game fights and get those eliminations because this is what we're seeing with them. They're, they're incredible loot. We have the purple pump right there. Those power weapons that can really win Fortnite matches and of course win tournaments in the in the in the sort of context of a more traditional tournament, but. And they're popping that med kit, getting four peppers as well. Two each in duos. Of course, they do drop in stacks of two. So this is almost the perfect situation for them. They have a lot of materials. They're up in a nice high position. Really looking good. It's all about the next zone for them. Where's the next zone going to pull? They should be able to rotate because they got those peppers, but maybe they'll want to use those a little bit later on to maybe go for a late high take or something along those lines. We'll see Speedy and Muzz. I think in the bush here, this is a very sneaky strategy with sniper. Bush and sniper combo is always deadly. And again, they have themselves in a really, really good situation. Just on the edge of zone. Having a look at Jamper and Threats. We've seen them play so well today and even go for some height takes. So you have got to be careful. They don't just ramp over them. You should apply that pressure if they do. Yeah, they're just eyeing up the competition right now. Eyeing up any opportunities available. They see him holding on to an edit. And they try to 3-2-1 the build there. They know... They might just be below the surge, but no, things are going to update for us here, and they're actually fairly comfortably above, and honestly, it's not really going to be too much of a fact this game. There's only 54 players left, so things should end up sorting themselves out on this next rotate here. But again, that eastern portion is so congested, especially that north side of it too. Like, my gosh, the majority, the bulk of the lobby is sitting right up on top of one another. Yeah, that really is true. We're seeing so many teams in that northeast side. And look at southwest. We have one team just sitting pretty, just on their own. They won't have to worry too much about it. Maybe Surge might be a problem for them, but of course, there's only 51 players left, so they shouldn't have to worry. Ages and Deegan, Deegan here trying to disengage from this fight. They have got the shields to heal back up if they do need to. They're taking a lot of fire right here as Ages tries to get himself out of there. And this is when teammates can get split. This is when Ages and Deegan might be a little bit split. Could be susceptible to going down, but looks as though they're able to take their heals nice and easily. As we see Dijon right here, just on the low ground with two peppers as well, which could be great for this next rotate, which is a long one, as you can see in the bottom right corner of your screen. These, all these oh northeast teams, they're going to have to rotate far, aren't they? Can you believe that the one team that was down there by themselves gets the actual zone? Like, look, they're completely safe down there. All right, all right. I need the production team. Show us who is on the southwest of the zone. Who's this green marker down there? Because they have got in every single zone. Just line up a beautiful drone shot for us, please, before it gets all jam-packed. Uh, back to Agers and Degen, though, who's sitting right next to X and B and Chimp, by the way, who won the last game there. Stretching edgy down here. Okay, might be them. They might be one of the two that are here. My gosh. Yeah, this is truly crazy. I don't think I've ever seen quite anything quite like it. One team getting the zone, whilst every almost every other team not getting zone. 
We see the launch pads put in play again. They gotta be very, very careful to make sure to land together. It's very easy to get split with these launch pads. So that can really force them to have to think on their feet. Booger and Looter right here trying to get some shots off ahead of Stone as somebody just lands in front of this Mero, just landing on in front of them. They say, okay, we can do we can do that damage. And Mero goes down there to Booger and Looter. Another well-coordinated double spray from them. Playing like they've almost played forever, you know? They've well-coordinated duo play there. Yes, sir, and here it is. We're going to go ahead and keep rolling through right now. Knife for Kanata. Holding high ground, eye to eye with Zypha and Zork. Again, this is that last game. Kanata and Nypha really have been trying to bring it home. They've been playing for high ground as often as they could. But now, with snipers in play, hand cannons, you can see the big fire rifles coming out. They're trying to go toe to toe right now. Who is going to pull this next zone right now? It's going to be so crucial. Who's it going to be? Is it going to be Kanata and Co? I think it is. Fantastic zone pull for them. As they can now try and advance their way up and just dominate that high ground position. Of course, we've seen teams take high ground this early and it might not pay off for them because they do need to pick up those eliminations. And in season seven, we don't have the harpoons. So of course, getting those refreshes while you're up on high is not as easy. So maybe height's a little bit less dominant as well as the launch pads. It's not quite as easy to hold that high ground. We're gonna see how they do up on here though, whether they can maybe get someone that's launched on them and, and pick up that refresh because they will run out of mats eventually, I'm sure. Yeah, it definitely is. Gonna come down to this though right here, Kanata. In the last game, can they finally make it all come together? Can they put the puzzle together here? Is gonna be the big question right now. They're starting to really branch out here. They have the material to do it. Everything is going in his favor. All he has to do is maintain control and roll through the lobby right now. Bizzle's gonna find Colazzo. This is Colazzo's best game as well. And no. The guards let down, Nifer gets pounced on, and all of a sudden, it's a fight for height. It's end pen and polarized. Kanata, though, with the true beans right there, ends up literally deleting all the HP and pen had to work with. And now he's still challenging high ground. He knows he's got a clear understanding. Hey, we can take this here. There's no way they, they can pass back now. Yeah, he really does. And that just shows how easy it is to lose the high ground this season with the introduction of launch pads. Look at how high high ground is now in the top left of the screen. We're seeing so many teams trying to take that high ground because oh, they know going. it's so important. They're going to try and get this refresh now on Sparebow. Can they do it? They're dropping in with those, those epic assault rifles as well, both of them. And they just think, you know what? Let's just rotate on in. Let's try and use this launch pad and maybe get ahead of zone. They haven't got too many materials now. Only 51 bills, which sounds like a lot, but I'm sure they'll be burning through that very, very quickly. And look, they're still working their way up little by little here. Kanata's keeping close eyes on height. Who is fighting for it? How, how can he time this entry up for Looter on the other side, though? And Booga, they make it all the way to the end. But no, Zlen's going to be the one that wins this one over. And now, from Booga's perspective, what can he do here? He is by himself. Chug Cannon, very vital shots coming out here. Only 10 material, 10 builds left. If he finds a nice little rotate around the outer edge, sees players down low. He can take the floor if he wanted, but reveal too much. It's X and B and Chimp. Still up in this game. Winners already today. Yeah, Booga, we've seen him do so much today, and especially leading Nosh and now Looter. And hopefully he can do it on his own. He's oh, not no. looking too good. The minis do fall down, but. Big drop. He needs to try and get a refresh here, and he does see Ooh, one. Look at mats. that. Is that going to be enough mats? I don't oh. think it is. And someone does get his boxes. Oh, with a great nice. Shot. Booga with a fantastic pump shot right there, showing he is one of the best players in NA East. On his own right now. Got plenty of materials. Now that is a refresh that he needed. And that is a refresh that could propel him into the end game right now and maybe pick up that elimination, that victory royale with a couple of eliminations as well. I mean, it's possible, but he keeps using his chug cannon because he has to. I'm not sure there's going to be enough time for it to get enough shots back in. But still, a siphon, a big pump, anything can still happen here. On high ground, Acorn is hidden in the bills there. Jamper still up somewhere near the top. Kanata at the ultimate high ground. For Booga though, he's still in another fight and finally he goes down. But now it's the story of Kanata. What can he do? He's down to his final no white. Bills. Last heals and no build. There's water below though. Will he go for the jump? No, he wants to stand on these builds here. The low ground is just too dangerous here. Too many players up. He's willing to sit inside the storm right now and just stay up for as long as possible. Finds a siphon back here. It's not enough. It doesn't give him anything but materials. Still gonna be welcomed here. And look at that, buys him enough time. This pump Ooh. shot was important, but no, he couldn't hit it. And it's actually Qua who's still up here. And now he gets Booga's shots here. He's up, he's got the chug cannon. 
He's on his own. He has the shotgun. I think he might have run out of uses, though. He's only got 10 HP. Five kills, uh, five eliminations as well. Does go down right there as well. Unfortunately for him, Qua now on his own. Looking very, very nice. Still in it. Still in it. I thought he went down, but um, we must have switched to another player. Sent again. Except centered on the height. Osp and XM on low ground. They are the only alive duo right now. Quad goes up. Oh, no. no. Big pump. Big pump onto Scented right now. That's a punishment shot. And he's going to have to heal here. That might have just sealed the deal. That might have just wrote in the written the fate out here. Scented jumps down. And now he's 2v1 up against the boys down low. Quad's trying to come in here. It's a ticking clock. And he does not have enough to survive the storm. And another duo comes out to the top here in the final game for us and Xset. GG's. I mean, minor, listen. They get to take home the last $1,000 available of this $6,000 prize pool. Uh, what a day of games, man. What a day. I mean, this has been truly unbelievable. We've seen so many incredible plays, so many players that have popped off in both their traditional duos and maybe some new duos we've seen today. We look back at some of the highlights from that last game, some of the 